find your people and i'm looking at the gorgeous mandy caldwell who has her collar popped she has her (laughs) collar popped today people her collar is popped she's ready to look out look Look out out. look out lee sent us a meme yesterday that was a possum Uh and the caption was representative (laughs) (laughs) and i was like were you spying on me when i was talking to waste management (laughs) i feel that i had to pop my collar to deal with waste management look well let me tell you i got a four thousand dollar credit for the crazy estate thank you very much any questions there we go everybody pop your collar pop your collar and straighten your tiara and go to work keep on moving i love it i love it i love it well i had a big weekend Mandy, way to hear about it. I in mean, it was old Mekonga. I was in Mekonga, and you know, nothing much has changed. It still smells like pot and regret in Mekonga. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you can't say things like that because my sister will just take them and run. Well, it really does smell like pot. Not that my sister listens to our podcast. Well, I, mean, it, I think the world smells like pot now because and maybe I can assure right. you that Santa Rosa Beach also <laughs> smells like pot. Maybe that's it. But I'm driving to town and I'm like, welcome home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, especially at that Spring Street exit, if you know, you know. Uh, Swear but to you. the best part, besides the people, obviously, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but besides the people, I got to see my pups. Yay, um, pups. And we'll put some pictures up this week. They're just the sweetest. They're the only beings on this world and in this earth that like me as much as they do. <laughs> Freddie, not a dog. I know, right? Freddie has been there for a long time. I was there when, uh, right after they got Freddie. So I've known him since he was a puppy and he's getting to be a little crotchety old man and I just love him, but he guards me. He sits <laughs> between me and the door and he stands guard over me the entire time I'm there so this is the house that you lived in when you lived in Macon. So up yes. until what, a year ago? Yeah, just like a year and a half ago. Yeah. And they got Texas right as I, after I left, really. After I left, they got sweet Texas, who had never lived with me at all and did not grow up with me, but likes me more than any dog has ever liked me before. Well, what's not to like? Oh, well, hmm, I don't know. It depends on who you ask, but um, Texas is just the sweetest. So I'll put some pictures up of them. They're just so fun and it's so nice to be wanted. <laughs> you can always count on the dog. I don't, I although that's not true. Um, that's not true. Not mm. all the, not all dogs love mm-hmm. all people. And mm-hmm. let me tell you, if your dog is trying to tell you that they don't like a person i'm going to tell you you should listen you should listen because the dogs are not wrong Mm -mm. never never and um tex fortunately and freddie i passed their test so there we go so it's great to see the pups um it just made my week um and their parents did too (laughs) yeah um so this weekend was the big fundraiser in town or one of the big fundraisers in town. Uh, the civic club raises hundreds of thousands of dollars for different charities all over Macon. And it's, um, a musical review. And this year, my friends, um, John and Rachel were the chairman. It's a huge undertaking. It's a lot of work for a full year. Um, and not only, were they um the chairman but they performed in the show uh, but friday night is always gala night gala. gala so there was a tent out on mulberry street um we however my girlfriends and i chose not to go to the tent because that's a lot of peopling yeah it's a whole lot of peopling and although i love those people i don't love them all in the same like 100 square feet and up in my grill yeah that's fair um and so we went to dovetail for dinner and i love dovetail we in fact my hop was just full of pictures from dovetail from nine years ago because for my friend allison's 
40th birthday, which mm-hmm. was nine years ago. Wow. Uh oh. Um, she rented a limousine that there we go. Us up in the big city of Tifton. And we took the limousine to make to go hear a comedian who was performing. Where did I graduate from law school? What's that building? Like on Cherry Street, I think. City. Where, oh, the auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was performing there. Okay. So we took the limo. We had dinner at Dovetail. Met our my friend Shauna came and met us for Love dinner. Love that. And then we went to see the comedian. I can't remember his name because I don't like comedy. I'm here yeah. to tell you. But anyway, I do remember the delicious dinner we had at Dovetail. Yes. So Dovetail is on the second floor of a building that has held a restaurant since probably the 70s. And downstairs is a restaurant called The Rookery. And Which if you went to Mercer University, you will your, remember The Rookery. And now, your name is, is Dovetail- on the wall. Did Dove is uh was Elizabeth Reed Music Hall what used to be where Dovetail is? Where was Elizabeth Reed Music Hall? It was upstairs from something. It was next door, maybe, which okay. the rookery has taken over. Um, which they have new ownership now. It's the Moonhanger Group, which is my friend Wesley Griffith, who does a great job around town. They bought H and H, which they've done a really good job. All the like the Macon staples, Natalie is they own now. Um, and the rookery they bought. So those are kind of the three classic Macon restaurants. H and H is where the we've talked about us where the Ombros used to eat. The Rook is like this great burger bar place um, with neat seating upstairs, downstairs, even all in one room. And then above there is like a, a higher end place called Dovetail, and it's the same people in the same building. And I used to eat there. <laughs> quite a bit when I was in town, even I just by it. myself. And yeah. so I would sit at the end of the bar and I'll talk to all the waiters and waitresses. And my friend Kevin is the manager. And I got there. This is again, why I love going to Macon. I got there and Kevin was like, Oh my gosh, Katie, I saw your name. Your name's been on this reservation for so long. And we were so excited you're back. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Good to be home. It's good to be home. And he was shocked and amazed that I did not get the same dish I get every single time I go. (laughs) I always get the scallops with the pimento cheese risotto because it is so good. And it has been on the menu the whole time because it's so good. Um, But I got another small plate. I got the elk ragu pasta that was delicious. Yum. And we got the deviled eggs for the table, which are also delicious definitely remember deviled eggs oh my gosh they're so good so we had a great time uh a friend of mine named casey her husband was in the show he sang most of the he's really good um he's got a great voice he's a banker which is why the show is so fun i can't remember somebody did i can't remember who one of my law school friends i think posted a picture of it you know because you had asked me if i knew what it was was like i don't think so and then once i saw that picture of it i do remember seeing pictures yeah yeah so um and then another friend of ours um who's actually casey's friend but i remember from high school came up from saint pete and joined us and we just um had a great time anyway it was just a fun night and then we walked back to the grand and because all those people had been at the gala everybody in the audience was knee walking drunk (laughs) that's always fun (laughs) which made me want to not go back on friday night so maybe (laughs) next year we can go on thursday night i don't know but um the performances were fantastic well, I bet they were a live, you know, like a lively audience. When they stayed in their seats. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, these three young boys were sitting next to us together and they went back and forth. Anyway, I I said something to them finally. I was like, can y'all just stay, like, do you need a diaper? And they just looked at me. Anyway, <laughs> they were drunk. They don't remember it. But. The performances were fabulous. Good. My stockbroker, John Lewis, who was the chairman, sings and played. He played the Almond Brothers Gold Top guitar. He sang Layla and all kinds of other things. 
his wife, Rachel, who I grew up with, um, his very, they're both, all these are young, young people. I'm old compared to him, but, um, our mamas are best friends. Our grandmothers were best friends. I love Rachel. She sang beautifully. Um, Casey's husband, Ryan Mims was great, but it's like you, you go and your banker and your stockbroker and your doctor, my, um, like people I went to high school with didn't have their shirts on, on stage. I was like, I don't <laughs> need to, I don't, I didn't see that in high school and I certainly don't want to see it now. Um, they did a kiss performance, which was really good, but like, I, I saw the makeup. I saw yeah, the makeup I don't that. That. No, the Wilson brothers did not have to do that to me. <laughs> Listen, I, when I lived in Noonan, um, they decided, somebody decided that we should do a musical at church mm. and they decided it should be nonsense. Oh, and they tricked me into coming to audition. I can't remember what they told me it was, but they it was not an audition. I walked there with Etta. Mm. Um, and then they're like, just take it and read it. And you know, what? please, we can't do it if you don't do it. So finally, I was like, okay, fine. So the acting and the singing part was not a big deal. The choreography, yeah. forget yeah. about it. Yeah. I was yeah. like, y'all, I cannot do this. We had to cancel the whole thing. I couldn't do it. Yeah. And for people to get up there yeah. and have choreographed dances yes. that they do at our yes. age, when I can't remember why I walked into the yes. other room, it just, yeah, it's, it's very impressive. So the girls, of course, are not usually the ones that do the funny stuff. They do very, right. they're real good. But the boys, when the boys get up there on stage and you see them in jorts and you see their kneecaps and, you know, it, it's just so much fun. Like my friend Baxter, who is a rock star, um, he's related to a bunch of great musicians. I think I've talked about him here on the, his grandmother's one. I held her cane. Yes. Yes, we have mentioned. So Baxter played the piano and sang and did a great job. And so I texted him while, you know, during the show. And I was like, great job. And then he came, comes back out on stage and like a headband and neon socks and all this weird stuff bouncing on a ball. And I'm like, I take it all back, Baxter. I take it all back. <laughs> all the good you did before when you played and sang negated by... Your headband. He's like, was it a wham? Was it a wham? Accomplished. No, it was more like, um, <laughs> let's get physical or something. Oh, and all the boys up there dancing with neon, and it was just disturbing. But that's why we laugh. We come to laugh, and um, the funny men. There's a group of funny men. I use that term extremely loosely, but one of them in particular, his nickname on stage is Booger, and they made fun of the mayor. So in Macon, they are doing this new amphitheater at the old mall. And part of what they want to do, I don't, have you heard this? Mm -mm, I've oh, heard about the pickleball courts out there. Yep, the pickleball courts are there, and there's going to be an amphitheater with your buddy Jason Aldean's going to be one of the first people to perform there. But You should take a picture of this face. Well, so the, the area around the old mall is not the safest in the world. So what they want to do. Listen, I used to live right there. It was fine. It, when we build apartments, baby. What they want to do. Katie's like, that was 30 years ago. That was 30 you years involved. ago. What they want to do is have a gondola system that goes from Mercer and downtown Macon. I, I'm to sorry. The mall. I swear to God. As in in the air? As in, in the air. So the people that the gang members that you're going to fly over their neighborhoods can take shots at you is my feel about what's going to happen. As it's just going to be target practice. I'm much more concerned about a gondola system. Yeah. Downtown to the mall. Yeah. Think about the neighborhoods that's going to fly over. So, I don't even care about that. I'm just worried about the system itself. Get yeah. out. I'm sorry. That's all. Yeah. yeah. So Goober, the funny man, was making fun of the mayor for wanting to do this. Well, the mayor was one row was back at the other end of the aisle. And the whole time, the I was Who leaning was back like, is he crying? Is he Who laughing? Is the right now. Oh, my gosh, Lester. And they said, thanks, Lester, about 5,000 times. I would just look back and go, oh, God. 
Oh, oh Lord. Anyway, it was good. Small town. It was really town. funny. So we we had fun. It was it was a fun weekend, and they, you know, they raised a whole lot of money for some very worthy charities. I mean, they give literally hundreds of thousands away to each place. That's great. So I'm proud of them. That's great. Um, and then the last thing, it just came in the mail today, like as I was on my Zoom call for my class, because, you know, I read a lot about Jesus, but I couldn't resist, Mandy. I couldn't resist because the new, if I can pick it up, the new Kristen Hanna book. Oh, I saw today Sundog Books. The Women is out. Uh, published a stack, like the stack of new releases today. And I saw there was a new Kristen Hanna book. Not that I have time. Look at you. Did you finish Covenant of Water? Uh, yeah. Did you like it? I loved it. Okay, good. Yeah. You so it, it the, it's, well, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a big book. Yeah, it's a big book. And I, I kind of raced through the end of it because, you know, starting school. I don't have the time or the energy or the uh, emotional stability to add anything else to my life right now. However. Well, you don't have to read it right now. That's the beautiful thing about a book is it can sit there. And but I want to. Well, so, and you can too. You, we'll you can read it. But you we'll don't see how that goes. Uh, but I'm really excited. If you, okay, listeners, if you have not read The Nightingale run my favorite i think i can't remember the name of it right now but it's the one about the dust bowl it's like oh yeah yeah um four winds or something four winds yeah four winds is good nightingale's my favorite and then the actually i also really my other favorite one might have been i can't remember the name of it y'all this is how good i am with books um it was the one that was set in alaska yes oh my book club read that yeah. one those that are my good. those are my three favorites. The, the four long winds. Road. What was that? I don't remember. Gone so long. I'll Katie look it up. Said, I'll put them in there. It's also very good with book titles. Um, the Nightingale. Nightingale's the best. Yeah, no, I did love the Nightingale. But so Kylie, good. yeah, she's just a great writer. She is. So I'm very excited. I don't even know what it's about. I didn't even read the preview or the blurb or the whatever. I just knew it came out, and so I I got it. Yeah, she's one of those authors. Yep. Um, speaking of. Have you read, um, <laughs> so bad, uh, Gentleman in Moscow? No. Okay. I can't remember which one. Showtime. Hold on. Hold on. I just sent it to book club. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. It's spelled A-M-O-R. And his last name is Towels, T-O-W-L-E-S. Um, he wrote, hold on, let me see which one's coming. Yeah, A Gentleman in Moscow. Um, excellent book. And Showtime. Uh, I was about to say. Showtime has made it into a something. No, T. T-O-W. Yeah, okay. um, Ewan, Ewan McGregor is Ooh. going to be the gentleman. It is such a great book. Okay. All of his books I really loved. He also wrote The Lincoln Highway and Rules of Civility. Okay, um, I need to add him to all my, of those to do yeah. maybe this summer I can catch up. Yeah, yeah, love all those books, but yeah, I'm excited about the Gentleman in Moscow for sure. I'll look That's up fun. all the so I'll put a separate section in the notes with all our book recommendations. Not that this was we were doing books this week, but it just turned into that way Listen, and it showed up at the door. The we yeah. go with the flow, we do. We're laid back, we're cool girls. With we that. have our collars popped and we're ready to go. <laughs> we pop our collars. To sit by ourselves in our house all day. Um, so, Mandy, well, tell me about your week, ma'am. My week was low-key. That's um, good. You deserve that. I was excited to have a low-key week. I went to dinner. I did, did have a funny story. I went to dinner with my friend Lane um, on Friday night. She lives over by the bay. So, if you've ever uh, come to Santa Rosa, when you come over the bridge... Um, right at the foot of the bridge, there are a couple of restaurants right there, and Lane lives like right there. And so we okay. parked at her house and it's been walked. A long time. Oh, uh, so we parked at her house and just walked to one of the restaurants that's right there. And I'm not even 100 percent sure what the name of it is because it changes so often. 
Um, but Lane is very particular. Lane is, uh, she's the Alabama housewife. If you want to look her up. On Was Instagram. that the video where you got yes. hit on yes. and you didn't realize it, ma'am? No, well, no, I realized it. This That's is what happened. Twice. This is what had happened. I realized I was getting hit on this time because it was so obvious. But this is what had happened. So, but Lane is, I mean, she's the Alabama housewife. And she's and beautiful. She's blonde and beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, the blah, blah, person, blah. Like, we love you, you Lane, her, but gosh, can there be something wrong with you, please? When you ask her what she does for a living, she says she's a Southern humorist. <laughs> okay. okay. This is Lane's personality. Have we got okay. it? Like, I have watched her and she, li she likes to sit at a particular place at the bar at all the very like she likes to sit at the bar to eat and it's every restaurant Same. we go to there's a particular place at the bar she Same. Wants to at. so she will go in and she will work the crowd to the such an mm. extent that she can get the seats where she wants to sit at the bar mm. so i was just standing there you know we walked she said let's go look and see if there's a seat at the bar and so we walk in and it's packed and there was one gentleman who was sitting by himself and there were two empty chairs on either side of him. So this was an easy maneuver for Lane to just ask him to move over and then there would be two empty seats. And But I'm just hanging back watching her do it because that's what I do. And uh, so he just like, I can't, and it's so loud I can't even hear what she's saying. Um, but uh, he just kind of stands up and he's like, no, no, y'all just take my seat. And he's not looking at me at all. He's looking at her. And then he looks at me Oh, and I mean, from the moment he looked at me, I was like, what is happening? Uh, and he I was, am. I mean, he was probably late 60s, early 70s. And he oh. had a scarf around his neck. This will come Maybe in play later. A little too old for you. So, uh, but I mean, it was immediate. I thought, what is going on? And he says, you me, have your collar popped. I did not have my collar popped. Oh, on okay. Shirt. Oh, uh, he says, where did you get those glasses? First thing out of his mouth. I said, well, I got them at Optic 30A from my friend Corey in Redfish Village. And he goes, well, they're very expensive. Well, yes, yes, they are. Not that it's any of your business. <laughs> so? so that was sort of the vibe. And then, but it was just hysterical because like, like he, it, he just, he didn't have it was he was so focused on me which never happens Same. and didn't have anything for lane i mean it was like hysterical that is he fun. Said, that's so he something was said about her hair and she said well my hair's flat and he was like yeah it is i mean it was just like what but so but he was kind of like she was all excited because yeah. he did like he did point blank ask me before he went downstairs are you dating um, and I was like, that's what I'm she said in the video. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Lane, I'm not going out to dinner with him. He's, he's a, a little old. Yeah. He's snooty. Um, and she was like, he's like Jack Nicholson in, yeah. in the movie with Diane Keaton. What if Nancy Myers sent him to you? <laughs> <gasps> Nancy Myers did not send him to me. Um, anyway, it was so funny. Uh, <laughs> now, look, um, I like an older man. Yeah, I mean, it was that was fun. But I, I would that's be happy a little to go. bit. And my general rule is I'll go to dinner. Like, well, sure. said, I'll go to dinner, sure. sure. I, but I didn't even like want to spend an hour with him. Like, he yeah. was just, and Lane's like, he was just nervous. He didn't know what to say. I was like, I don't care. I yeah. don't care. If he that's was your taken call. aback by your beauty, ma'am. Well, listen, he needs some. He no. Needs some Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. Anyway, that was funny. But that was sort of all I did. Um, Which, I didn't okay, by the way, really... that's the second fella that Who has... The fireman! I'm still uh, mad at you for that. So, yeah, that one I just went right over my head. I uh, know! Like, a man in a uniform? Like a Marine? Or a cop? Mm -hmm. Or a fireman? Woo! Yeah, no, that didn't really wind my watch, but mm. different strokes. <laughs> oh, anywho, so, but now I'm gearing up, getting ready for the uh, Super Bowl. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, oh, and the Grammys. Well, I'll, I will talk about that in a minute, but yeah. So, the Super Bowl, there is a kid. Oh, we got to look up. Oh. 
Yeah, I know that like the ESPN Sports Center channels have shared this some kid. clips of him. His name is Jeremiah Fennell, and y'all, he is the cutest kid you have ever seen. Apparently, he, he has some health issues, and so he can't play sports, but he loves to watch them. So he decided to become a reporter. And I love him. The child so much. takes his job so seriously. He has got his little shirt and tie on and he is ready. He is prepared. He has got questions lined up for every player. It is memorized. The cutest thing. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't have any notes. No mm-hmm. notes. And then he just, he, so he was, the first one I saw was when he was talking to Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. And what I didn't see initially, I saw today from a different viewpoint. If you see the camera that's sort of on the side of them, Mm -hmm. Then you can then get a gander of the hundreds of cameras that were pointed at him Mm -hmm. as they were sitting there at media day. Lots of pressure Um, for that little kid. And he says, I had a lot, I had some questions that I was going to ask you, but now that I'm up here on the podium, I think I just want instead to have some fun. So let's pick a fantasy football team. And we each get to pick, and the you, the only rule is you can't pick anybody who's currently on your team. And we both have you as our quarterback. Okay, go. And so he and Patrick Mahomes went back and forth, picking every position, offense and defense, the whole. And so, like, his knowledge of football, of who plays what position and who's good. And, you know, he let Patrick pick first, and several times Patrick would pick somebody. And he's like, oh, you picked my, you know, guy. So then he'd have to come it's yeah. just astounding. So um, I'm going to say I need him to go to the Olympics. Yes, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. But he, George Kittle, who's the tight end for the 49ers, he's, who is a hoot. A he's, hoot and a hoot. He's a hoot. That's a good word for him, isn't it? He walks up and George Kittle goes, oh, man, I know you. <laughs> and he hands him a hat and he's like, can you wear this hat just while we're doing the interview? Because it was like a 49ers Super Bowl yeah. hat. And the kid's like, oh, I guess so. And he puts the <laughs> hat on and like they have their interview. Oh, and the kid'll signs the hat for him and everything. I mean, just the cutest thing you have ever seen. He's probably so. what, eight, nine, ten, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. Maybe ten ish. So no cute. So cute. So, so cute. He has been bringing me so much joy to watch wow. him have his have his uh moment in the sun well deserved yes um and what a good lesson to just you know pivot if you can't yeah. if you can't you know and to have that much it. knowledge to be able to pivot yeah i mean smart smart kid so yeah just really impressed so look up old jeremiah um and then the other thing i did i did watch the grammys i did too and i Some found myself Self, having some complex Taylor feelings right because and so here's just sort of my baseline with Taylor is like Taylor's always been like fine I've never sought out her music right. I haven't downloaded okay. any of her music uh, probably probably 10 years ago um my friend Allison who the aforementioned Allison who's the 40th birthday we celebrated at the dovetail at the dovetail um, probably about well, it's been more than 10 years ago because that was nine years ago. It's probably been 12 years ago, long time ago. Her daughter, Kate, big Swifty, because um, this is when I was still in Noonan, we went to a Taylor Swift concert in Atlanta. Mm. Allison and I went to our first concert together, which was Rick Springfield at the Albany Civic Center. Thank you very much. Well, mine um, was New Kids what? on the Block in Macon, Georgia. Oh, their manager was from Macon, so NKOTB, baby. Okay, yeah, baby. Hanging tough. Um, but so we thought it would be fun for me to go to Kate's first concert with her. And that so was it was fun. Taylor Swift in Atlanta, probably. Wow. I mean, Kate's 18, so it couldn't have been, you know, 15 mm-hmm. years ago. It's probably yeah. 12 years ago. Anyway, and I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed the concert. Mm-hmm. It was a good concert. Yeah. But then I've never listened to any of her music again. You know, I've never sought it out. Um, I'm happy to listen to it when it comes on. And I'm real big on Taylor and Travis. Like, I think it's great. I have enjoyed that a lot. I have sought out videos about that. Just, Mm -hmm. you know, watch them together to see what she's wearing to the games. Like, that has all been fun. 
But I would say that I was kind of annoyed by Taylor at the Grammys. I, I think she tries too hard. Which, can I say the first thought I had from the, like, once she made her entrance, and I don't think that was on purpose, but once she had made her entrance in and sat down and then she immediately starts standing up dancing, I thought, oh my God, she and Travis Kelsey at this together? Oh my God. <laughs> I know. So I I love that she supports, especially other female artists. She shows up for Beyonce, even though Beyonce's husband was kind of a, Mm -hmm. you know what at the thing um I well i mean that's still not taylor allison swift's problem well he didn't make it taylor well allison that's swift's true problem. that's true anyway so um i get that we need to be supportive of other artists i love that about her but like i think she tries too hard to do that and it's not authentic all the time and you know standing up the that's whole authentic. time like, you don't need to stand up the whole time, Taylor. Like, right. I would have stood up for Fast Car because I love that song and I loved uh, that version of it. Yeah, that was great. And the fact that the other couple people were standing up, but like, she stood then up for probably, everything. Then she probably runs into the people people watch her so yes. much if i don't stand up if for i don't woman, stand up then it's because i hate this person which is not you're gonna know when situation yes i agree but i also but the, i think it's the authentic that was a yeah. good word yeah um i don't know why the ribbon at the top of my computer just turned pink is it um breast cancer awareness month it's no. not um, but but it's so you know i've been stewing on the whole thing and i think it gets back to that whole wrestlemaniafication yes. of our society that i was talking about it's okay to hold two counter yes. feelings at the same time we do not have to live in a binary existence right. We can like Taylor and Travis and we can like Taylor and everything she stands up for. I mean, it's just like that, like with Jay-Z. Jay-Z can stand up there and say yeah. that it's, that the Grammys can do better. Yeah. I mean, in fact, that Beyonce has more Grammys than everybody and she's never won an album of the year. That doesn't mean that's a knock on Taylor. Well, it doesn't mean to me, it, it doesn't mean it's a knock on Beyonce either. Because I like her music no matter what the Grammys say. Well, sure. He, but yeah, but he was talking to the. I mean, I get that. I get what he was doing, though. Yeah, I, I think so. For me, I like about Taylor because I love. A, I'm very mischievous, as you know. Like I mm -hmm. love a good prank, and so mm -hmm. I love following her train of thought with all her um, riddles and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I did listen. I got the last album because I also love a revenge album. Mm -hmm. And I don't like Scooter Braun. I think he mm -hmm. did her dirty. And so I did get the last album. Will I get this one? I don't know. Do I love a society or a group? I love that she's calling it the, you know, whatever poets, whatever. Tortured, tortured poets department. Because he had some group chat called the Tortured Men's Club, which is her so dumb. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's so dumb. Um. So anyway, may, I may get this one, but it's just because I love that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily about all about the music, although I think she is a good writer, but she was just trying too hard. But I think she does have a lot of pressure on her of, you know, if I don't stand up when Tracy and Luke are up there singing Fast Car, which she clearly knew and loved, then she'll be labeled. They'll say that she's a terrible person. Right. If she stands up right. for somebody else. Right. So what do you do? You stand up yeah. for everybody. So right. I, mean, I get it. And then it, everybody says you're trying too hard. It does. It looks like you're trying too hard. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, I was sort of like settle down. And really the moment that did it for me was when she won the album of the year and she pulled Lana Del Rey up there with her, who obviously didn't want to come. Right. Um, and then they were just being silly up there. Yeah. You know, they were just being. You're and a I don't, adult now. I don't like. I'm not real patient with silly in I don't general. Do silly um, either. But yeah, that was sort of when I was like, okay, yeah, 
let's act like we've been there before. Yeah. Which I don't love that phrase either because I like people who are excited yeah. about things. Yeah, of you course, know? of course. But also like, okay, yeah. settle down. Settle down. Settle down. You need to calm down. Which, you know, she wrote a whole song about people telling her she needed to calm down. And now I'm one of those people telling her <laughs> she needs to calm down. This was the this was the problem I was having in my head. Am I old? Yeah. Am I old now? But I'm that's okay. Eating. Right? Well, that's yeah. just who we are. Yeah. So anyway, it just brought me all back to the whole wrestle WrestleManiaification of our society. I think that's and the fact that it's okay that we can hold two things at once. The best way to describe what we're living right now is still that WrestleManiaification. Yeah. By the way, my friend Elizabeth was listening to that episode and she texted me and she says it started with Jerry Springer. Oh, Jerry. And you know, she's not wrong. Right. An excellent point, Elizabeth. It is. They did throw chairs like they did in WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, to me, the highlight of the whole night, I, and I will, I will, was just the, and I've seen great feedback on it, was Fast Car. I mean, it was just so good. And beautiful. people criticized him at first yeah. for singing that song. Yeah. And I think part of the best, the thing that I like the most about the performance at the Grammys was his video beforehand saying, mm -hmm. legitimately, I loved this album, the whole mm -hmm. album. And the fact that he was real authentic. And he did a great job of centering her. Yes. That was a, a, do you follow Lovey on Instagram? L -E -V? No. I can't remember if it's two V's or one. Um, she's a great follow. She's a great follow just from a point of white privilege. Yeah. He does a lot of education to help me understand my white privilege a lot of times. Right. And she was talking about how a lot of the Taylor Swift she because you know people another thing people were saying is that taylor was disrespectful to celine and her point was you can't criticize taylor without all the swifties coming at you you know right. and how you, you can't exist as an authentic human being in the world if you can't take some criticism sure but taylor swift can because she is a thin beautiful white woman yeah and those folks have a privilege that a lot of other people don't just, you know, so, and but anyway, I, that was interesting too. What I hope though, is there's a difference between Taylor Allison Swift and the Swifties. Yes, for sure. That's just like, uh, Travis getting <laughs> his, or his barber, that story in the New York the fade Times, saying that they had invented the fade come and they both come out saying, we never said we invented the fade. It was the reporter who wrote the story. Like, yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just and followed her, by the way. Um, good. Love, lovely. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk to y'all about is a new series I started last night on the recommendation of my friend Casey. Okay. Um, Feud on FX. It's one of those oh, the swans. Murphy. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's one of those Ryan Murphy shows. Yes. Um, it is a star-studded cast. It is so good. It is set in New York City in like the sixties, seventies, eighties, like glamour central. It's based on Truman Capote um who was really good friends with a lot of these socialites in manhattan and it's based on that he wrote a book about it eventually but it's all sort of based on that interaction and it is just to tom die. hollander not tom holland but tom hollander who plays truman capote if he doesn't get every award he is so good in that role so different from what he is in real life Mm -hmm. But then the laundry list of amazing female actresses, everybody from Molly Ringwald to Callista Flockhart, Demi Moore. I mean, anybody in that age range is, Demi I mean, it's, Watts. oh my God. It's Diane Ladd. Diane Ladd. Naomi Watts is fantastic. I mean, oh y'all, it's so good. It really is. The costumes, the hair, the jewelry. The the, the apartment. Oh my gosh. The restaurant. Oh, 
watch it, the swans. And I, it makes me want to go back and watch the first feud, which was was um, also excellent. It was about, um, yeah, it was about Betty Davis and, um, Oh gosh. Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't see that series. Susan Sarandon was Betty Davis. Oh my gosh. It was so good. It so I need so to go good. back and watch that. You do. You need to, which is yeah. what Casey did. Cause I, I've already watched that. So when I finished the second episode last night, I went and started a Capote documentary oh. called the. Yes capote tapes or something yes that, i and saw it, that yeah, and yeah, yeah it starts off the interview the the documentary start, starts off with an interview with her man the, his manager's daughter oh right? oh i know so i'm like wow how did we get here considering i had just finished the second episode of- and i know what happens between right. the manager <laughs> wow. right yeah so anyway that's all and that's, that's a fun little rabbit hole what's that is that on fx or hulu uh, or you fx watching? and you watch it on hulu yeah. fx or yeah hulu. okay i'm so glad you put that on here because i it's so good it is so good i mean yeah. the hairdos alone right miley cyrus at the greenies had nothing on them nothing which by the way also i love she got some hate for that hair but i love that hair she also had nothing on hope brady in 1984 on days of our lives we and let's talk about miley for a minute too at the grammys won her first grammy and i like that song very much and she inserted some personal stuff and i was so happy for her she was genuine authentically so excited yeah and i was happy for her so good she's also a lot she's also a lot she's a whole lot but look she's got a body Ooh. she was rocking it she was bob a mackie all that was bob mackie and he it was well that makes sense mm-hmm. he can dress a woman with a body like that i don't know mm-hmm. if he can handle mine but <laughs> he could definitely handle that kind of body because he did for share and um you know even Carol burnett is a slight figure and so mm-hmm. he just dressed her so well it was beautiful so good for her yep go miley yep Well, Katie, talk to us about the food you got going for us this week. Well, I thought I would kind of, um, you know, the big game, since we can't put it in print, I guess. look, I looked that up. The only time you can't say the Super Bowl is if you're trying to make money off of it. Okay, well, we're not trying to make money. So I'm going to change it in the notes. (laughs) Super Bowl food. Okay, so we have talked a couple, you know, we've done a lot of food on here, right? And so I started a list as a reminder of things that we've already talked about that would be good. So Mandy's Rotel Dip, which I have made, which I'm thinking about making again for Sunday is so easy. Listen, that is a football season only dish. It is so So good. The Super Bowl will be the last time I make it, but I I will make it. Yes. So good. Um, Nanny sausage balls. That would be fun to just take to a party and use. And then those Cheez-Its are always good. I made, um, um, did I miss I made, anything? Mm, now you ask me. Um, <laughs> I'll think on it. Um, on I made it. some Chex Mix last. Oh, that's night. always good. I then ate it all. And the whole time I was thinking, I should have just made Katie's Cheez-Its. They're good telling you um but i do love a homemade Chex mix um what i put in the notes are is something that um we have not really talked about um before but they're so good and so easy they're jalapeno crescent cups so you just get crescent roll dough and put it in mini muffin tins and then you put like a mixture of cream cheese and jalapenos and bacon and all kinds of good stuff and bake them and that's it and it's so easy they are spicy. You can make them as spicy or as not as spicy as you want. You could cut the num, you know, the amount of jalapenos or not use the juice. I don't know if you know this, but most you, of the spice is in the juice. So, do you use like canned chilies? Is that what you use, or do you chop? Oh it yeah, out? I get the jar. A uh, a jar of just jalapenos. yeah, just the diced jalapenos okay. and just put as much as your little heart desires. It says an amount in here, but. It's like cheese. I measure with my heart. Yeah. Uh, but they're so good and they're so easy and they take 12 minutes to bake. 
So they're real easy to do real quick right before a party. It's like a popper, but then you don't have the jalapenos yes. on your hands. Right. You don't have to grab a whole jalapeno and bite into it. They're just in a crescent roll mm -hmm. basket. And they're so right. yummy. So um, send us your favorites. I mean, I, you know, I was looking through my cookbook and that one stood out to me. Um, you know, most of my other ones in the Griswin cookbook um, are very like old lady, like cucumber mousse and stuff that we don't make anymore. So um, I thought this was a good one to share. So, mm -hmm. um, and then of course there's all, my other favorite that I really love is those ham sandwiches, but that recipe is out there in the world, 5,000 different ways. Um, the ones with the, you mix butter and Worcestershire and poppy seeds and Dijon mustard and spread it and ham and cook them. I like that one very much. Yeah. Um, so, um, what are, besides the Rotel dip, which I really do think I'm going to make that. What else do you like for a Super Bowl party, Mindy? I like a, I like guacamole. Oh, yeah. I like a wing. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a great trick for wings. If you look up, um, it's a website called Serious Eats. And okay. there's a guy that writes for Serious Eats named Kenzie something. He, in fact, he and the Smitten Kitchen are starting a podcast together soon. How excited are we? But Kenzie is sort of like you a see my face. Uh, Kenzie's like a food scientist, and he published a recipe about wings years ago that are for baked wings. But the trick is you sprinkle some baking powder on them and leave them sitting out, like you put them on a you have the cookie sheet and then you put a rack on the cookie sheet and then you uh, probably some other stuff in addition to the baking powder, but you sprinkle it with baking powder and let them sit in the refrigerator overnight. And that's what gives you a really crispy skin on your wing. So if you wanted to do wings at home, I would recommend looking that up. Or and what is his, what'd you say his name was? Kenzie. I think it's Kenzie Lopez Alt maybe. There we go. Found it. Found it. Look, I do all the journalism <laughs> for you, so I have now Love it. found the wing recipe, and I'm putting it in the show notes. And it's great because it's not as messy as frying them, but you still get that crispy skin. Love that. I love that. Um, also love like a um, my friend, my law school friend Amy. Her mom used to do just like on Friday nights. Their like Friday night meal was like taco meat, ground meat refried beans guacamole you know like just sort of like a so seven like a seven layer, layer dip mexican mm -hmm. dip but uh there's a one um cat cooks k-a-t cooks okay. she's on instagram um she uh went to culinary school used to work for martha stewart she just posted like a healthy seven layer dip her whole thing is you don't diet and she just came out with a great um cookbook if you're interested she's she's a good instagram follow but she just posted at like a healthy seven layer dip that looked delicious that was refried okay. beans and then like a greek yogurt mexican seasoning layer i like that and then guacamole and um tomatoes and then lettuce so uh -huh. that would be a nice alternative that too. is i like so, that this would be my recommendation i love that and i did see um I'm, there's a seven layer dip in the Gr Griswin cookbook. There's also uh, Miss Linda's walking tacos, which is a great oh, dip as well. Gotta love those. I used to do those for Will's like spend the night parties. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, great. So there's okay. one different thing and a list of all the things we love. Um, I did not have an Olympic moment. Did you have an Olympic moment? I know that we have marathoners my cousins again I didn't live watch. along my cousins live along the the route and so they posted lots of pictures i love, um, that. I love the that. marathoners yeah so so we have some olympians already for paris i'm just super excited so yep 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 there we go we'll keep you posted going forward anything else that comes up absolutely absolutely um well, okay. maybe tell us about your favorites i'm super excited about um the this list so um first up is the we can do hard things podcast now this one i don't know so i'm gonna add glenn that to my doyle. list as we talk it's glenn and doyle okay and her wife uh 
Abby Wombat. And so Glenn, I've heard about it, but I don't, I don't have it on my list. And Glenn and sister Amanda. Um, the three of them do it. And it's, I don't listen to every episode that comes out, but I, every time I do listen, I enjoy it. And I listened to the most recent episode with particular interest because it was, they, uh, it starts out, they read a letter from a listener who is childless by choice. And she wrote a letter to them saying, you know, if you ever have the opportunity, if there's anybody out there like me who is childless by choice and is happy about it, like, could we please talk about that? It was a great letter. And then there's actually a woman who has written a book about it. Um, and it was really a fascinating discussion. It talked about motherhood on a spectrum. Mm. Yes. Um, and I how they're right and how there are some people who are childless by choice and happy with their choice and glad you know never want had an instant of ever wanting kids and knew it always and yeah you know, and that's okay versus women who are childless by choice because but if they had ever met somebody and had a relationship with somebody they probably would have had a kid so it's not like they've never wanted a kid that that just sort of yeah. start, but they're happy with where they are Versus, you know, all the way down to the women who their whole existence has always been that they wanted to be a mother. But I just love the thought of presenting it on a spectrum like that. I thought that is a good way to sort of help us understand. But the other thing they talked, she, they mentioned, um, because, you know, obviously Glennon and Abby were relating it to being queer and how, I think it was Glennon that made the point of how vital it was for her to have a community around her to support her yeah and how that is something that has not been present in the childless by choice community no because there is no community yeah because people look at us like something's wrong with us yes. that we don't want to be mothers and so it was just a really interesting conversation interesting um and not just for childless women i think it's interesting you know for everybody because yeah we all sort of fall in that spectrum somewhere I mean, mine was not necessarily by choice. It was by physical issues and by choice. I mean, I probably could have figured out a way if I really wanted to. But, you know, I, I think I may have even told it here. Someone who is very progressive and lovely and normally doesn't say things that hurt, uh, you know, or doesn't, is more aware, mm -hmm. said to me, after I'd had a hysterectomy, when are you going to give your parents grandkids? Um, not. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's, you know, sort of it, it it's, that's why I say it'd be good for everybody yeah. to listen because yeah. people, no, I'm definitely going to listen. I mean, like my mother used to say to me on the regular, well, don't you want to adopt a little girl from China? <laughs> like, no, no, I really don't. I really don't. And I think there is value for, you know, I mean, I don't live right near my nephew and nieces, but um, my friend's children, they have my phone number. Right. And they all that is true, me. Katie. Yes. But even, even with that, you don't have to have that to no. have you as a woman. No. But I'm just saying there's value in all different kinds of mothering. Yeah. Oh yeah. There Listen. are all different levels of my, of being a mother. I have women in my life that are like a mother to me that are and not my plenty, actual mother. And there are plenty of times where a kid will hear something a whole lot easier. Yes. From not a parent. Um, yes. but yeah, that, that's all very true. But I also loved, and they pointed out in this podcast too, that even if you don't have any children in your life, you still yeah. have value as a woman. Absolutely. Because that's yeah. the other thing you get all the time too is, oh, but you have your nephew. You're so close with, you know, but yeah, I am. Yeah. But even if I weren't. Yeah. You know, it doesn't anyway, mean, just, yeah. The, it, it is so ingrained in us that our value as women is tied to our uterus. Mm -hmm. That we, I mean, it is on some level almost, bio, people just don't, I don't want to say it's biological, but it's so well, socially- if and, Dax were here, he would tell us it's, you know, anthropological. Yes, it is. And I think that's the word I'm looking for. It is so ingrained in our social world and, and anthropologically 
that that is what we are used for. That is what we are good for. That if we don't do that for whatever reason, then we have no value. Yeah. Because we're not serving the patriarchy. Right. So anyway, that was it. Indeed. So I'm definitely going to go listen to that. But maybe that's, not that this just, week. This week is not a good week for Katie. Yeah, so. maybe later. Um, but week. they have many other great. Yeah, 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 yeah. They just, and they're real thoughtful. Um, they get, you know, they, are you familiar with Glennon at all? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, so she can be a little much sometimes. Yeah. She can be a little Taylor. Um, but on the whole, I really do typically like, yeah. um, what they, what they're putting, you know, they're trying to make the world a better put out in the world. Um, so that was one I wanted to recommend. And then I've mentioned this one before just in passing, but I wanted this to. One of my favorite new podcasts I listen to. So it's Pablo Torre Finds Out is yep. the name of it. Pablo used so to be good. the host of the ESPN Daily podcast. That's where I first found him. And he left probably six months or so ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. And he went to a network that's actually, I think I have figured out, it was started by several former ESPN employees. Yeah. Um, But he does things like... He does their sports stories for the most part, but their stories like, why does everybody say, let's go? Yeah. Like that was a good did, one. Where did that start? And how that did was it a happen? Great one. Yeah. Yeah. So he does like deep dives on sort of random sports yeah. adjacent stories. It's mm-hmm. you're not gonna be breaking down coverages. Mm-hmm um well i I, the the one that you suggested that i still like and i think it's going to be relevant yet again when we get into this new football season next year is the um how they select the final college teams to go to the playoff and they had a guy on that used to be on there that was is a mathematician at mit and a former football player And that's, that was my gateway episode into Pablo Torre. So that's the one you suggested and I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just, he's so smart. Yeah. Those are the kinds of stories he does. It's a sports adjacent story, but he does a deep dive on an interesting topic. Um, So I just, I love Pablo. He's smart and fun. Um, And and he's Filipino, by the way. Yes, he is. Um, What his name says he should be. (laughs) He talks about that too. It's really funny. Um, but he's the uh, my other funny, my other favorite episodes he's done recently are with um Katie and Guy. Can't her name's Katie? I can't remember her last name right now. But she's been she was on Celebrity Jeopardy. Yes, it was what so good. If you're a Celebrity Jeopardy fan, you gotta go listen to those so episodes funny. with Katie because it's hysterical. So good. But anyway, and then the third thing was another podcast. It's called Criminal. I'm not sure if I follow this one. I'm not. Go <laughs> it's look. an interest. It's another interesting one. It's uh, it's produced out of Chapel Hill. A woman named Phoebe, and she has the funniest voice. She's every. She's like, "Hi, it's Phoebe." Um, and I actually the episode I was listening to today actually was a sort of behind the scenes, and they had traveled to a club that meets um, is a little town outside of Chapel Hill. I think it was called the liberal arts club which i love and i want to start one um but they invited phoebe to come talk to them and so she was sort of giving a history of the show and she and her producer worked on a radio show and then at a certain point that show was no longer going to be produced and so they could do anything they wanted to and she said what should we do and the producer said well why don't we do something about crime and so it's not like a true crime podcast where they're it's voyeuristic about this you know one specific crime of you know that happens they do really interesting you know sometimes it is that sometimes it can be that okay and sometimes they'll go back in history about you know like a jack the ripper era crime that happened and so then it's also sort of about history and institutions and systems that were in place there i think there was one recently about there was a fire in new york like in the 1800s maybe and all the people who worked in these garment factories in new york were women 
mm-hmm. immigrant women and how that this fire that killed like 60 women I can't remember it was a lot of women in one fire this fire that killed them is what then caused all kinds of fire safety codes to be enacted mm. fire like it changed the standards for the fire department like they didn't even have a ladder that would oh. go higher than four feet before wow. that Wow. okay so, so you know it's just an interesting take on I crime. like that um and she always says uh criminal.com not calm criminal.com you know anyway, calm so yeah so those were just some of my favorite podcasts that i was listening to and then Thank i have you. another television recommendation and this one i i love fargo the television show not the movie um if you have not watched the previous seasons season two is particularly my favorite see i like season one the best season one was great but season two is my very favorite um and they're all you don't have to have watched season no. one to watch any other season but season five season five harkens back to season one though it does a little bit but you don't have to have watched you it. don't have to have watched it yeah but we will tell you if you text us we will tell you yeah. what you need to know from season one but, but it's season Matthew five, McConaughey, so you should watch it season five Ooh. has john ham and y'all when just he steps out of that hot tub and you see his bear behind mm. listen mm. listen mm. um i love me some john ham and he is so bad he's so bad in this show it Ooh. i mean evil incarnate look so bad out but it's got john ham it's got jennifer jason lee when yeah. was the last time we thought about jennifer jason lee a long time early 90s she yeah. is killer uh, it's got Keely from Ted Lasso, who yes. again should win every award. I there love is. her. She's so good in this. Um, and it's just a very girl centered. I mean, in spite of all those, you know, John Ham. John Ham. Look, so bad. He's for the it's, girls. It's he's just a very, for us. <laughs> when, one, women empowering. Yeah. Um, season i felt like so Keely good. is basically like the there's a you know temple episode. is her name it took me a minute do you know yeah. temple you know yeah. that's right um she was just on uh armchair expert they had a uh, whole week yes it was great um but there's an early episode where she is stuck in a convenience store hiding from some people trying to kill her and she's basically like macgyver she's amazing. like it is so good so Anyway, highly recommend Fargo. Highly. My last uh, recommendation there. So. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Season five is really good. I, I think, have we talked about Matthew McConaughey and um, Woody Harrelson? Woody Harrelson and their Her potential detective. brotherhood. Yes. We talked about that last week. That's what makes season one detective. so good to me. Her last true detective. That's, That's true detective. But if you do you're right i'm getting them mixed up <laughs> because i just watched true detective the newest episode yesterday that's why i'm getting them so mixed up yeah yeah that's Sweet okay baby jesus okay you reading a lot about jesus look yeah. it's been a week <laughs> it has been a week today i had to i went to work out and all these people showed up and i'm not ready to people I, I, i'm not people in this week i don't like people this week and there were all these extra people so i had to sit right up or I work out right up front at the mirrors and that's not nice Mm-mm, nobody like, I didn't I mean, like some people do like that but not me no it set my week off in the wrong direction girl i'm sorry Ugh. i mean look i'm doing better so it's not terrible but it's like oh i want my spot in the back yeah i hear you I hear you. I almost had to hurt some old ladies to get my spot back. <laughs> Listen, just stand your ground. Well, what's what's uh, what's in store the rest of the week? Anything oh, the rest there? of the week. So you know, it's the Super Bowl. I'm sure I'll watch it. I'll probably fall asleep after halftime. <laughs> um, and then um, look, let me tell you how excited I am about the Valentine Fellowship luncheon. Exciting, yeah. After church, I'm not. I'm shaking my head. I'm not. 
It is my least favorite day of the year. So super excited. I get to celebrate Valentine's Day twice. <laughs> and then um, Ash Wednesday is on Valentine's Day. So I've got an extra service. So I've already written the sermon and everything. And um, okay. I'm going to do crosses and not hearts, even though I really want to do hearts on people's foreheads. <laughs> So there's that. I, if I was going to be there, you could do a heart on my I board. would do a heart on your head. Um, but yeah, so that's about it. Just the extra service and, and doing all the things. Um, yeah. Reading okay. about Jesus. Yeah. When we're done, that's what I get to do again. Yay. Yay. It's read about Jesus and write about Jesus. Well, good. Yeah. We're, we're glad you're there learning all the things for us. All the things. All the things. Uh, baby. Yeah. So that's all I'm doing. Nothing, nothing yeah. major. I hope you have a good week. You too, friend. Um, you know, I did get some messages from Brooker. Oh, good. And she um I love that woman so much. I did not mention that I called her out for her Christmas decorations because it I was did. her birthday. It was her birthday. I, I didn't want to make her mad on her birthday. I told her. But, however, she did ask me this question. Where do I find podcasts? <laughs> she said to me something about, I don't I don't listen to podcasts. The only one I listen to is, is yours. Uh, so I think maybe we sent her the first one. After it was back when it was YouTube. just on YouTube. Um, and uh, she's like, so I don't really know how to do it. And I wanted to go like, well, that's the only one we're still doing. It wasn't like, it's not it's a one-time not thing. New. We do it every They're week. still there. <laughs> I still put them on YouTube. <laughs> oh, but Lord, bro, we love you so much. That's the reason we love you. Thousand percent love it and i'm glad she had a good birthday i don't think it was as fun as if we had been there i'm oh, just saying that's impossible i know not we love, possible. we love you brooker have a great week even Everybody though you don't know a, how to listen you will never hear this love you know who else's name we didn't say birch, birch. she also had a birthday we love you birch all right y'all have a good week